Hey everybody, how's it going? In my recovery video last week, I briefly mentioned that I do some stretching when I get back and I had loads of questions asking about the sort of stretches that I do. So let's bash through it real quick, keep it short and snappy, unlike usual, and these are my stretches. First off, before I even get home, I'll have started stretching my calves on the bike. I just find this a lot easier. So if you look down at my feet, I'm clipped in. I've been out on my mountain bike today, which is why this one's here. Clipped in, I just simply drop my heels and I do this for 15 seconds with my right foot forward and then the same again for 15 seconds with my left foot forward. Depending on how your bike is set up, how your cleats are, you'll get the stretch in a slightly different position on your calves, or rather in a slightly different place on your calves. And that will just help stretch out any tired calves. A muscle which you don't really use that much for cycling, but it's one that's good to stretch anyway. And then after that, I'll move straight into doing my quads. And that's real simple. Although the one thing that you need to be sure that you pay attention to is maintaining a nice straight body line. So you stand up nice, tall and straight, hold on the front of your shin, not too much on the foot because then you're pulling your foot and it's kind of a false stretch. And you wanna make sure you feel the stretch down through your hip flexor, whoop, poor balance, and down through the front of your quads. So it should be quite, quite a nice even stretch all the way through that muscle. And again, 15 seconds on each side, roughly. Don't need to stand here doing them all now, but you get the idea. 15 seconds on each side. And if you feel like that's enough, if you feel like that's not enough rather, I'll come back to doing a second set of 15 seconds rather than just holding it for 30 seconds. That way you'll also feel the difference between each stretch. A real weakness of mine is my hamstrings. I actually do a complete separate exercise for these, but I still stretch them in a fairly normal way. So we'll go to the floor and I'll show you those. So the rest of my stretches are pretty much on the floor. And since there's no chance of me falling over, take off the helmet, take my shoes, the hamstrings. So you have to be really careful to make sure you stretch the entire hamstring and not your lower back. So that means holding a nice straight back and then leaning forwards and you'll really feel, for me in particular, I feel the pull or the stretch down at the, the um, insertion of my hamstrings into the back of my knees. That's a real tight spot for myself. I'm not sure if it's because of the way I sit on my bike or it's just a genetic thing maybe and then reach forward as far as you can go. Obviously, if you start stretching your back, you kind of get that false stretch. You really want to make sure you keep your knees pushed down to the ground as well. You probably feel it in the back of your calves a little bit too. But that's a good one. This is my absolute favorite stretch. As you know, the next two are my favorite stretches. So then go for the glutes. And this is quite a simple one. This isn't going to target your piriformis, which is that tiny tight muscle in the back of your glutes, but it's a good all round glute stretch. And again, hold that for around 15 seconds. This one, when you're tired after a long ride, really, it feels quite relieving because it's a muscle that works pretty hard on the bike and it can get quite tight and it can be neglected as well. So look after your glutes, they're powerful. All right, oh, I'm gonna do it properly in a minute, but I wanna give you a real idea of what I do. Then this is probably my favorite stretch okay? because now you'll be incorporating the lower back as well. And that one really helps you get into a a low position on the bike and it just helps you feel a lot more supple in daily life as well you should feel the stretch if you are tight i'm tight today i haven't stretched for a week I'm feeling really tight all the way across the top of my back and my shoulder as well and again around 15 to second 15 to 20 seconds you also feel the hamstring stretch then as well it's quite a it's a good one you can get loads all at once hamstring lower back and then i go for the adductors as well because they can get pretty tired when you're riding your bike if you're struggling to get your knees down to the ground, try and sit up high and give them a real good push. Bring your feet in as close, as close to your body as possible and give your legs a bit of a push down. You should feel a really good stretch. If I'm feeling really tight or if I'm really tired after a long ride, I'll do two laps of that possibly, or at least until I feel like I'm starting to recover. Like I said in the last video, I just really enjoy 10, 15 minutes of quiet after a ride because there's so much wind noise when you ride your bike. Even today out on the mountain bike, it's quite windy here, believe it or not right now. And it just really helps me relax. And that always, I feel, kickstarts my recovery. I find it quite a crucial period over the years, at least. I've done it less recently, but I always find it a really important part of my day. The verdict's kind of out when it comes to stretching as to whether it will really prevent injury or help your muscles recover any faster. But it makes me feel better. And to be really honest, if it makes me feel better, then it's good enough for me. And I think it's worth doing because of that. If you find that you're struggling on your bike because you're getting tired shoulders and things like that, there are loads of upper body stretches you can do as well. So one of the really good ones is to open out your chest. So you stand up tall, up against the door frame and put your shoulder at 90 degrees to the door frame so your arms out to the side like that and you just lean forwards and that will really help stretch the pecs there and the same again on the other side 
And if you're getting a tired neck, something that can often be quite good is to put your arm across your body, give it a pull like that. This isn't something that I actually suffer from, so I don't actually spend much time doing those. Uh, the pec muscles may be a little bit more. As cyclists, everything on the inside tends to get quite tight, so hip flexors are quite important to pay attention to as well. So really stretching out, really pushing your glutes forward and stretching all the way down the front. That's a really important one to try and remember as well. Certainly if you sit in an office chair for any period of time or you spend a lot of time traveling, they're also really important ones to pay attention to. On the whole, because we're spending a lot of time like that on the bike, it's stuff on the inside that needs to be stretched out to open ourselves back out again. They're my favorite and they are by no means the only stretches that will benefit you on a bike, but they're the ones that I've always done. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that in the comments below and I'll see you again soon.